When you think of the term bucket in college basketball, you're probably thinking of the six foot five inch guard from UConn, James Booknight. Due to his dazzling displays of bounce and his penchant for knocking down tough jumpers, the springy book night has been a steady riser all draft season and is now looking like a lock to land in the top 10 on draft night. NBA front offices know that book night will have no problem scoring at the NBA level. However, they'll want to find out just how much game book night has left to unlock. How much playmaking ability? How much defensive upside? How much untapped potential does the 20-year-old New Yorker have left lying dormant underneath the surface? Welcome to Film Sesh, an NBA draft deep dive by Corey Tulliba, highlighting how a prospect might make an impact when they step onto an NBA floor. When you watch James Booknight, the first thing that slaps you in the face is the jaw-dropping athleticism. Whether Book Knight is coming off a back screen for a monster alley-oop, whether he's blowing your mind with a ridiculous put-back slam, or whether he's melting your brain with a picturesque windmill, James Book Knight knows how to put on a show. Book Knight is an absolute blaze in transition and is nearly impossible to stop when he gets you on your heels. As Book Knight approaches with a full head of steam, your only decisions are to either let him score or foul him. NBA teams looking to push the pace for easy scores will love Book Knight's ability to get out and run, beating every defender down the court. Equally impressive is Book Knight's ability to slow down with the ball in his hands, or act as the trail man, getting to the hoop and dropping in smooth floaters after coming at you full steam ahead. And that float game is something that he showed off while playing in the half court as well, going either left, dropping it in off balance, or going right. Book Knight was a smooth operator getting to that shot, a shot that we've seen become an integral part of a guard's scoring package. And then there's the shot making that made Book Knight such a hot prospect as we approach the draft. You'll find shades of Bradley Beal, Zach Levine, and Jamal Murray in Book Knight's tough shot making endeavors. Book Knight will get a switch onto a big and put him on skates with his handle and then calmly knock down a jump shot right in his eye. As soon as Book Knight sees you rocking off balance, it's too late as Book Knight has already let it fly. At the next level, Book Knight will play off more ball screens where he showed off the ability to get up and pull in the mid range. And when you go under the screen, he's putting three in your eye all day long. But for all the tough shot making that Book Knight showed off this year, he still only shot 29% for behind the arc and 37% on far twos. If you're a tough shot maker, it means you're a tough shot taker. And there are times when Book will settle for shots that could be attacks or shots that could be plays made for his teammates. For as valuable as the shot making ability from the perimeter has become, especially in the playoffs, it's the consistency in making these shots that will determine what kind of ceiling that Book Knight eventually reaches. But what I like so much about Book's game is that much in the way that Jamal Murray thrives playing next to Jokic, I think with the right team construct, Book Knight is going to thrive playing off the ball next to a playmaker. Book Knight was pretty inconsistent on low volume and catch and shoot situations, but I fully believe that he's going to be an off ball shooting threat at the next level. And in the flashes of off ball shot making that he did show off, I love how versatile the shot profile was. Book Knight wasn't used as a stationary shooter at UConn. They ran him off of plenty of sets where he was able to shoot off movement, running his man off a plethora of screens to free himself up. That constant motion didn't just benefit his shot making as he also made smart cuts to get looks going towards the hoop. He'd curl off pin downs and show off some slick finishing and come off back screens to throw down monster oops. Book Knight finished 66% of his close twos, which is why you'd like to see some of those tough perimeter shots instead become downhill attacks. Attacks in which he can use his lightning quick first step to blow by his man and attack the hoop. That first step will terrorize bigs on switches who don't have the foot speed to keep up with the speedy guard. Even an athletic big with ridiculous length like Evan Mobley couldn't keep up with Book Knight's first step. Book Knight even showed off the ability to finish through contact in crowded areas. Outside of Jalen Green, there may not be another shooting guard in this class with Book Knight scoring upside, but the next big evolution of his game is going to be his playmaking ability. Book Knight averaged more turnovers than assists this year and struggled to make the right reads to his teammates, oftentimes putting his head down, ending up in no man's land. 
Smart teams at the next level will blitz Book Knight's ball screens and make him a passer under pressure, where he showed off his inexperience as a playmaker struggling to pass when guarded by two. Book Knight's still learning the nuances of pick and roll passing and tries to force the ball into tight spaces after picking up his dribble. Book's playmaking is gonna be a process. Teams will need to be patient as Book Knight is currently a very basic passer. He'll make very basic drive and kicks or dump off reads to his teammates. He'll quickly swing the ball when drawing chasing defenders off movement. And he occasionally did show off the potential to make patient pick and roll reads and glimpses of hitting the advanced weak side corner read. But as is with most young playmakers, transition is where he really showed those passing chops. There's more room in transition and defenders are often scrambling, allowing easier playmaking windows. Book Knight is a ways away from becoming a playmaking threat, but we've seen guards like Booker and Levine become competent passers. And if he learns to hone in on the attention that he draws with his passing, it could be a potent weapon in his arsenal down the line. As with his passing, Book Knight was inconsistent on the defensive side of the ball. On the ball is where he thrived. Athletically, Book has the ability to stay in front of anyone. He has quick, active hands, and he'll get long, making it hard to get around him. He's not afraid to get physical and use his chest to bump you off your space. Book Knight's feet can get a little sloppy, and he'll sometimes karaoke instead of sliding his feet together smoothly, but the dude does compete one-on-one -on -one and gives the kind of ball pressure that you're looking for when trying to force perimeter threats into tough shots, or when looking more into the team construct, trying to force them into the help. Off the ball was more of an issue, as he can float a bit and get a little lost. He's a little too focused on the ball here and loses the shooter for just enough time to get out a little late as he chases him down cross-court. Even when he's dialed in, he can get a little overzealous and overplay his man, leading to backdoor cuts. And again, due to that overzealousness, he sometimes will break out of his team's defensive principles. Leaving your shooter strong corner is a big no-no at the NBA level. But it's better to give effort and be overzealous than to give no effort, and Book definitely gave effort. This is a big-time fight on the bigger offensive player in the post. Book's giving him hell on the front and forces the steal on the pass. The flashes were there. This is a great job in semi-transition, recovering to Jeremiah Robinson Earl, saving an open layup. And while this whole possession is a little sloppy, you love the effort to close out to basically every player on the perimeter. At the end of the day, you want a defender who's gonna play hard. Those guys typically improve and develop their weaknesses. Book Knight is still somewhat new to organized basketball, as he didn't start playing until high school. You can argue that Book Knight's development is right on track. The raw skills and the crazy athleticism are undeniable, and his shot-making ability is tailor-made for the league. Book Knight is most definitely worthy of top 10 consideration in this draft, and with the aforementioned package and the right team to develop those talents, you're looking at a potential all-star guard in the future.